I'll talk about the laboratory perspective of uh, breast cancer, which includes the art of uh, good grossing of uh, uh, breast specimen and the science of a perfect uh, elaborate synoptic reporting, which is very much necessary for uh, diagnostic, prognostic, and uh, also uh, follow-up and all purpose. Uh, it requires a uh, coordination between the, the pathologist, the pathologist's assistants, the technologists, and uh, also the surgical oncologists. So it's a very blooming subject. And uh, as we all know, a good synoptic report is essential for, for keeping the data elements in specific formats so that it can be retrieved easily. And also a uh, surgical oncologist is concerned about the margin status, uh, accurate grading, staging, and molecular studies. These are also much essential for uh, prognostic prediction. So we received the specimens from uh, breast um, in two forms, cytopathology and histopathology. The cytology specimen is a alcohol fixed smear. Uh, and histopathology, we get some tissue, may it be in, in the form of uh, thin coats or the whole excision biopsy or the whole breast, which are fixed in formalin. Uh, there are some indications for core biopsy, and I would say core biopsy is, a, is the foremost uh, procedure nowadays. Uh, it is preferred by uh, everybody. Uh, uh, over the FNSC. So core biopsy can be done uh, whether the patient uh, has got a breast mass or no mass, whatever. There may be no mass at all, but uh, on uh, screening mammography, there might be some calcification or microcalcification, which is an indication for core biopsy. And if there is a mass with or without microcalcification, that is a clear indication for core biopsy. So we, we have to do it if even if the patient do not have a mass, if we go for screening and if we find something suspicious, we should do core biopsy rather than FNSC. So core biopsy, we usually what we do, we do it under ultrasound guidance by using um, ultrasound probe, and uh, a biopsy gun is used, and it can also be uh, done by a stereotactic method, which is more uh, which gives more accuracy in uh, identifying the uh, exact point from which uh, the core should be taken. And also a mammatome biopsy is uh, further more uh, uh, effective or beneficial because in that uh, process, we do some um, uh, biopsy under uh, negative pressure. So we can take a, a larger core, maybe a 12 page um, core size that is a larger one uh, uh, to uh, which will provide more information. After getting the course from the breast, we can divide it into two parts by using a specimen uh, radiography machine. It's a very small, handy machine. If we get it in the laboratory, we can we can um, differentiate the course into calcified and non-calcified ones. And we can give more attention to the calcified course, make two cassettes, two different cassettes. Uh, so we can um, examine the calcified course more thoroughly and can take more levels, more sections, not to miss any sinister lesion in the, in the course. Here is a my difference between the morphological difference between a cytology smear and a core biopsy. In cytology, we get uh, the cells, a uh, group of cells or scattered cells uh, like in the, that shown in the left side. And in core biopsy, we get to see a larger tissue and we get uh, the exact uh, architecture, how the cells are organized or, at, or what is the pattern of the uh, cancer or whatever it is. We get further more information and which will be more uh, beneficial for uh, coming to a conclusive uh, diagnosis. So from a core biopsy, we get many, many informations. Uh, for example, tumor subtype, uh, what type of tumor it is, whether it is a 
as ductal carcinoma not otherwise specified or may be a cribriform carcinoma or medullary carcinoma or whatever the subtype, we can get some idea from the core. And also from the core, we can see whether it is an invasive carcinoma or an inside to one. Or we can, uh, we can also uh, have an ex extent of the invasive focus on the core to get an idea of what is the tumor size, exact tumor size, and also if there is an accompanying inside to component or not. We can grade the um, tumor from the core uh, though we do the nuclear grading, we don't do the total grading of the whole tumor because we are not going to see the whole tumor here, but we grade the nuclei inside the tumor, so nuclear grading we can do. We also notice some other points, some other parameters, which are also very, very important for predicting prognosis of this case. And also the, um, the most important part is we can do receptor status. Everybody knows about that. We can even go for the molecular studies from course. So now I shall um, talk about a few uh, words about uh, the fixative or fixation. So cold ischemic time is a very important thing which should not exceed one hour. Cold ischemic time is the time interval between removal of the tissue from the body and um, immersion of that tissue within the formalin uh, fixative before sending it to the uh, to the laboratory. So that is the cold ischemic time, which should not, which is maximum one hour. We should not uh, take uh, further time for uh, immersing the tissue, fresh tissue inside the formalin. And as we all know, fixative is the ideal fixative for any histopathology. Uh, that is a 10% neutral buffered formalin. And also fixating, uh, fixation time is also important. It should uh, be minimum six hours to maximum 72 hours. So sometimes uh, the surgeon uh, may hurry that uh, we need a, a report as, as early as, as possible, but sometimes because of, uh, especially in case of breast, we take time for fixation. We, we prefer to do the uh, main sectioning and uh, grossing next day. That is better that the tissue will be more fixed, properly fixed. And uh, that um, uh, if we do it before six hours, that is uh, digested, the tissue will, the whole tissue will be destroyed or sometimes a part of the tissue will be destroyed. destroyed. And if we do it uh, to keep it, uh, keep it for, for more than 72 hours, in that case also we can, we'll, we'll not have a good um, uh, report by immunohistochemistry. And uh, so the optimum time is between six hours and 72 hours. And I would prefer, or, uh, many of the pathologists would prefer to do the crossing of the breast sample day after. Now coming to the synoptic reporting, which is actually a linkage of an atomic pathology to directly to the patient care. So it has got importance. It is very critical for patient management and also for cancer surveillance where we can keep the data in organized fashion so that we can have a structured data set and we can retrieve the data whenever possible. We can do some research activities, resource planning, and patients uh, appropriate follow-up. Everything depends on a good synoptic reporting. Um, now we are uh, having more and more breast conserving surgery uh, specimens. So lumpectomy specimens, what we have in our laboratory, may it be uh, of any size, whether it is uh, circular or rounded or oval or irregular or whatever be the shape, we, we just visualize this. Uh, specimen in as a rectangular specimen and then we just try to um, guess about the uh, all the surfaces uh, anterior posterior superior inferior medial and lateral surfaces of that specimen and uh, here at this point it is very important that the specimen comes to us in an in a oriented fashion by suture mark so that we can we can get the idea what was the medial aspect, what was the lateral aspect, and the anterior aspect, etc. So we use some colors when we get the, this suture marked specimen, which we expect to get. 
And after that, we, we just, we can easily visualize it as a rectangle, having medial, lateral, superior, inferior, anterior, and posterior surfaces. And we use some colors, we color them. On the right side, we see a colored um, breast lump where we can see the anterior surface with the skin flap, a small flap of skin attached. So we color it uh, into uh, different uh, faces with different colors. This photo is taken from a grossing manual uh, from uh, a laboratory, histopathology laboratory of Brown uh, University, where they, are, they have, they have a, this photograph in their grossing manual. So this is another photograph where we, actually there is a, a universal template for inking the margins. So usually we color superior green, inferior blue. There is an universal template which we follow so that if the um, slide, whenever the slide goes to other pathologists, the other pathologists anywhere can, can understand which margin is that. Whether it's a superior margin, if it is green, it should be superior. If it is yellow, it should be, it should be lateral margin. So this is important. And after slicing the specimen into thicker slices, we keep the specimen again in the uh, fixative by uh, placing some uh, paper sheets inside. And then we keep it for next day when we will do the further, further section of the specimen. This is a very important, uh, very interesting paper published. Uh, it was uh, published by a group of pathologists and pathologists assistants of Canada in the year 2020. They have proposed a, a revised uh, grossing uh, manual or style or tool, which is uh, specifically um, fashioned for uh, post neoadjuvant uh, breast specimens. So uh, it is a very easy to use web-based tool where uh, residual cancer burden can be scored easily and perfectly and accurately uh, by, uh, by following this tool and uh, doing the grossing according to this uh, tool. We do the specimen photography and then do uh, uh, section mapping and then uh, do the sectioning accordingly. And in these pictures, in these pictures, we can see that uh, more, um, more uh, attention is given to the center of the lesion where, uh, from where, the, which is a, actually the center point of the tumor where a wire localization or a hydrogen marker has been placed so that nothing is missed and the RCB code can be done very accurately. So somebody may ask that what is the use of those colors? Do we see the, those colors accurately or perfectly under the microscope? That's why I have put this picture. Uh, we can see the colors very nicely. The green color, superior margin, black color, posterior margin, very nice color comes out. And these color, these are not ordinary colors. These are tissue colors and uh, used specifically uh, for the histopathology purpose. There is another big, uh, paper published in the year uh, 2019 and uh, a group of uh, society, American Society of Radiation Oncologists and Society of Surgical Oncologists. They combined has done a meta-analysis of a large number of uh, epsilateral recurrent breast cancer cases. And they have proposed that uh, the margin, the clear margin uh, may be very small uh, in extent and uh, as long as there is no tumor cell on the inked margin, this margin is called as clear margin and it is safe. So there's no need to do a wider excision, which actually are being followed. Um, at least one centimeter wide excision is being done. So they have proposed that uh, about 0.25 centimeter is good enough. And also they have proposed that after doing the lumpectomy, uh, we can do the whole breast radiation therapy, which is more and more effective than doing a wider margin. And also they have said that uh, there is every chance that uh, there is some, uh, some other lesions anywhere in the, elsewhere in the breast in the form of a ductal carcinoma in situ or a very small uh, invasive cancer 
So it is better to, to do the whole breast uh, radiation therapy and uh, also the margin status, uh, as long as there is no tumor cell on the margin, it is, it is considered uh, safe. So here is a mastectomy specimen, which we also get. And this specimen is also, uh, actually described in shape and we use two color only. The anterior surface is inked orange and the posterior surface is inked black. After coloring this uh, mastectomy specimen, we uh, do section. We take some thick, uh, some um, slices, we do some slices and then put some tissue inside and then keep it um, for, for next day in formalin. Then we do the axillary uh, dissection and find out the lymph nodes and at least 12 lymph nodes we should uh, take out. Uh, for proper staging, pathological staging of the, of the tumor. Uh, so the next day we take the sections, these are the perpendicular sections we take and uh, we include the breast, the sub areola, and also from the tumor we take the whole um, complete cross section of the tumor. Then we divide it into three or four section parts according to the size of the tumor. We also, while well, taking cross-section of the tumor, we also pay interest to the um, outer um, uninvolved area margin to include within the cross-section because uh, all the uh, lymphovascular invasions are actually seen on the peripheral area of the tumor. So that is important. And also we take uh, sections from all other quadrants of the uh, of the breast to uh, to explore whether there is any other any any sinister lesion early sinister lesion or not. We also take margins superior, inferior, medial, and lateral margins and the deep margin, which is very very important. The deep margin should be uh, should be taken and, and the special emphasis should be taken while taking the deep margin of the tumor. So there are some CAP guidelines which uh, are being followed for standardized standardization of reporting. And the procedure is important. Then we, we note down all the parameters, specimen laterally to tumor size, tumor size, and tumor site. This logic type and grade and uh, tumor focality, as we all know, these are uh, all necessary. Then we look for the TIL or tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, which is also very important. And, uh, High TIL is usually associated with high PDL1 cases, and also triple negative breast cancers usually more than 50% TIL we find in those cases, and also in cases where there, there are hormone negative but, but two positive cases, we get TIL. We, every 10% rise in TIL is associated with a better prognosis. There are other guidelines, so we look for the DCIS, uh, and we see, we also measure how many, uh, what are the number of blocks involved by DCIS and uh, positive margin, positive or negative for EIC or ex extensive intracellular, uh, extensive interductal component, which is also important. If uh, the tumor has got extensive interductal component, then there is a, some a, a different prognosis. And also uh, DCIS may be of different uh, nuclear grade uh, in the same tumor. And architectural pattern is also important, like cupriform or micropapillary DCIS have, are uh, relatively, um, relatively better. But comedo DCIS is most commonly associated with invasive cancer and also lymph node metastasis. So um, the margins, positive, negative, unifocal or multifocal or extensive margin involvement. These are important. So maybe we see that there is margin involvement, but we have to note down how, how many points, at how many points the margins are involved. Whether only one point, we call it unifocal margin involvement, or if it is multifocal margin involvement or extensive margin involvement, these are important. And in the regional lymph nodes, we look for the metastasis Macrometastasis, micrometastasis, isolated tumor cells. So to, to detect micrometastasis, isolated tumor cells, cells, it's not so easy. We have to take many, many, many sections from the lymph node. We have to take more sections. We have to, to take more levels to look for um, uh, actual uh, micrometastasis or 
isolated tumor cells. So only one section formula, if not, is not good enough. Um, we have to take two, three sections from each lymph node, and then also we have to take some serial sections from that particular section of that lymph node. So these are, these are very important. And lymphovascular invasion gives some clue about the aggressiveness of the tumor. And very, very important is the post new adjuvant uh, uh, breast uh, lump lumpectomy specimens. We look for treatment effect. The oncologists are concerned whether the, the, the therapy, chemotherapy or radiotherapy, whatever they have used for their patient, whether that was, that was good, effective or not. So treatment effect, it, we also measure that. And provided we get the uh, initial information, initial uh, how the tumor was, what was the size of the tumor initially when it was first diagnosed. So those informations, if we get, then we can go, go to give a good report. Uh, by noting down all the, all the parameters, which will give exact um, scenario of the treatment effect of the breast. So cancer cellularity also we count, and uh, we also look for treatment effect on the lymph nodes uh, as, uh, as it is done uh, in the breast, it is done inside. likewise in the lymph node also. So after uh, looking for the treatment effect, we can, uh, we can report, the, uh, report it as no definite response provided we know that what was the size of the tumor beforehand, or we can give definite response or residual cancer burden, we can score it from the tumor um, size and other parameters. And finally, we do the receptor status and for new, if it is equivocal, equivocal, we can do fish or dish genetic mapping. And uh, pathological staging, you all know that is important, and we are following AGCC 8th edition nowadays and for staging the breast tumor. Here are some photographs. Uh, this is the ductal carcinoma in situ, the two, two different lesions. One shows the low grade ductal carcinoma in situ, which is a cribriform type uh, DCIS, and on the right side is it's a high grade comedo. But I was telling beforehand that comedo type DCIS is usually associated with invasion and also lymph node metastasis. So comedo DCIS usually have got the nuclear grade, higher nuclear grade of the tumor cells, and there is usually some necrosis at the center of the DCIS. Uh, here is a invasive ductal carcinoma. On the left hand side is a low grade carcinoma, which is easily, which can easily be missed. And there are some uh, uh, cancer mimickers, which uh, it's very, sometimes it becomes very, very difficult to say whether it is uh, malignancy or not. So uh, we also need some special stains in those cases. So in this case, uh, on my left hand side, this tumor is a very low grade, uh, low grade tumor. And we sometimes we have to be are very careful uh, and cautious uh, while reporting these tumors because there are some mimickers which may, may or may not be cancer at all. And uh, on the right hand side is a high grade tumor which is easily uh, um, discernible, uh, it can easily be reported as a, uh, as a high grade cancer. These, are, these pictures are borrowed by those persons. I have given in the bracket. They have they have uh, published these pictures in the in the internet. So here are uh, the uh, some uh, immunohistochemical stains of arginine. Arginine two plus is usually uh, weak to moderate stain, and it is uh, also known as equivocal stain. And in those cases, we need to do fish. And this is a, on the right hand side is a very clear and evident Hutchinu 3 plus, which is a, a clear Hutchinu positive cancer. So Hutchinu 2 plus is also sometimes it, it becomes difficult to diagnose. And nowadays we need to see more than 3% complete membrane staining to call it 3 plus. So um, uh, these reportings are also uh, has to be done very meticulously, and also these reportings depend on a good processing, good staining, and there are many technical issues which uh, has to be followed. Uh, otherwise, we will easily miss the 
uh, actual scoring of uh, this hormone status and uh, heteronormal status. So uh, here are some uh, some descriptors we usually use in our pathology report, uh, which we have just I have written down. P stands for the pathological stage, C for clinical stage, M for uh, multiple foci of invasive carcinoma, which we just used while uh, uh, writing down the TNM staging of the tumor. R stands for recurrent tumor and Y for post neoadjuvant uh, specimen. So in the summary, I should say that uh, proper orientation of the specimen is a mainstay of getting a or generating a good synoptic report and also a good uh, histopathology report uh, has got both diagnostic and prognostic significance and therefore it needs optimum laboratory technique. And also a lot of parameters need to be attended before generating a perfect report. That's why we need a lot of, a lot of information from our surgeons and the clinicians uh, so that we can, uh, we can yield a better, better report. <laughs>